Today I'm driving the Alpine A110 and for those who don't know, Alpine is a French sports car manufacturer. They've been active since the 1950s, have produced um, fiberglass body sports car, usually on uh, Renault mechanics. In the early 70s they were taken over by Renault and they have continued building sports car until the mid 1990s. And now the brand has been reborn and in this case, it's not just one of those, yeah, we take a dead brand and start building it anew. I mean, sure, they have a lot of work to do, but Alpine actually has never really stopped making cars. It's just when in 1996, they stopped making um, their Alpine cars, they started doing the Renault Sport models. So the Clio RS, the Megane RS, they all come from the Alpine factory in Dieppe. In order to relaunch the brand, Alpine went back to their most popular model, the A110. It was built from the early 60s right up till to the middle end of the 70s. It had quite a long life and that's because the car was quite a successful rally car. In fact, in 1973, the Alpine 110 won the first rally constructors championship. Fast forward 45 years and we're sitting in the new Alpine A110. And what is it? Well, first of all, it's a very small sports car. It's only 4.2 meters long and about 1.8 meters wide, which means it's actually tiny nowadays. But that also means it's light. The car is under 1100 kilos and it has a 1.8 liter turbocharged engine producing 252 horsepower, giving it a very good power to weight ratio meaning the car performs quite well. Indeed, it does 0 to 100 kph in 4.5 seconds and has a top speed of 250 kph. So how does the A110 feel to drive? Obviously, the car feels very fast. The power delivery is very linear. In my opinion, almost a bit too linear because I personally prefer it when turbo engines have a bit of turbo lag and then a spike in torque because it makes them more exciting to drive. But in this case, I think the linear power delivery helps with the purpose of the car, which is being fast around the track, being predictable in the corners. So I guess it's okay. The smooth power delivery is accompanied by a nice and raunchy exhaust note. And this is a good exhaust note because when you're stepping on it, it sounds nice. When you're not, it quietens down, making this car very livable on a day-to-day -day basis. This car is a very good steering. It's direct, it gives good feedback. Um, it's exactly what you expect in such a sports car. It's great. The brakes are very good. I mean, the car is light, but at first they seem very hard. You see, on most modern cars, the brakes are very, very sensitive. So the moment you just touch them, the car starts braking. And in the Alpine, it's not like that. The brake actually, they need a bit of force if you want the car to stop, which in day-to-day -day driving can be a bit um, annoying, can need a bit of getting used to. But when you drive more spiritedly, when you drive on a, on a track, it's actually really good because it means you can really control the amount of braking pressure you're applying. So yeah, good brakes. This car has a dual clutch transmission. It's not offered with a manual. It's 2019. Manuals are going away, it appears, even on hardcore sports cars. Anyway, seven speed dual clutch transmission. It's very good, very fast. It's very smooth. Um, it does a great job. It has these nice metal pedals which stay in place the way they're supposed to and I cannot fault it. It's really good. So yeah, manual would have been nice for driving enthusiasts, but then again, how many are they really going to sell with a manual? So I can understand for them not building a car with a manual gearbox. Handling wise, the car is exactly what you would expect. So it's very nimble. You can really toss it in a corner. It's very easy to control. And when it starts to, you know, lose traction, 
um, it does so very gradually. This is, I think, also helped by the quite narrow tires. It only has 235s in the back, making it a very nice drive. The car also has three driving modes. It has normal, sport and track. The three different driving modes, they basically affect the throttle response, the way the gearbox shifts and the traction control settings. And I find that if I'm driving on a nice curvy road like I'm now, track is the mode to use because even in sport the traction control is too intrusive and too harshly the way it cuts your power and in track mode you still get a bit of traction control but it lets you have a bit of fun so you can have fun on normal roads without having to disengage everything and probably kill yourself and others so track mode with the ESC track I think on normal road is more than good enough. Obviously the car is quite hard in its setup but it is not uncomfortable meaning I don't get a lot of lean but at the same time I'm not shaken to death by the broken road which makes this car actually quite usable on a daily basis. I mean personally I drive a 2009 Nissan GTR and this car is way more comfortable. So comfort is not a problem in using the Alpine as a daily driver. When you're in track mode, the gearbox only works in manual mode with the pedals. It doesn't shift automatically in track mode, which I mean is fine because who drives an automatic on the track? But it also means that the gears will run into the rev limiter if you hit it. In the other modes, the transmission will upshift. So it's good that they have this function and another nice thing is, before you hit the rev limiter, you'll get a little acoustic warning that tells you to shift up, which is very handy. <laughs> the car has very good traction. Indeed, I think it has even a bit too much traction. It would be a bit more fun if it had less traction if you could get the back out more but then again this car is not you know a drift car it was built to be fast and sliding about is not fast so yeah it's a really well engineered car of course one reason for the good traction is that this car is mid-engined Previous Alpines have always been rear-engined, so like Porsches, for example, which is also a reason why they used to be referred as, you know, the French Porsche and whatever. But the new Alpine, they went the modern route, they did the mid-engine car, and, you know, it's good. It's really, really good. There's a nice feature. When you want to shift in a gear that the transmission does not allow you because you know, your revs are too high or whatever, the little number in the dash, it shakes. Like it's shaking its head. Like the car is going, no, 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 monsieur, ça ne va pas, vous pouvez pas faire ça. Hein? And uh, yeah, that's, that's funny. Being French, you would expect the car not to be built to the highest standards of quality. And you'd be wrong. I think the Alpine is built very well. It feels very solid. Um, you might argue about certain materials that have been used in the interior. There's a lot of plastic everywhere and it's not even the soft touch plastic, it's just some random plastic. But you have to also keep in mind, plastic is light. And lightness is what this car is all about. And from my point of view, it's perfectly fine. I mean, in the interior, some of the plastic is body colored, which looks nice. It's a magnet for fingerprints, but it looks nice. And also there is leather, there is carbon fiber, which, yeah, let's call it a carbon fiber. Um, yeah, this being the pure version means it's the entry level of the uh, Alpine. It's the lightest version of them all, and that's mostly due to these saddled racing seats. These are bucket seats that are not adjustable. You can only go backwards and forwards with them. And they save, I think, about 45 kilograms. Um, this is a saving I personally would not go for because 
Um, you can adjust the height and the angle of the seats, but you need tools for that and you need to, you know, do it once and then leave it there. And in this case, the car is set up in its middle position and I would rather have the seat in its lower position because I'm sitting way too high. So I'm not having the greatest experience in that way. The next higher um, trim level, the Legende, um, has adjustable seats that are, yeah, that you can actually sit in comfortably. So I would totally go for that. Another thing is the interior, it doesn't have an armrest. So this is basically an automatic car that doesn't have an armrest. So there's nowhere I can rest my arm. Um, yeah, but at least sitting as high as I am, I can rest my head. So win, win, I, I, I don't know, but it's, it's one of the quirks of the interior of this car. Another of the quirks, and this is really weird, it's got this stock right here to control the radio functions volume and everything else there is no other volume knob it's all done here all through the touchscreen and I'm pretty sure this stock is exactly the same as my uncle has in his 1987 Renault S-Bus so it's weird to use if you're not used to it and it feels kind of out of place in this car it feels like an add-on it's weird especially since you basically have buttons on the steering wheel there are buttons, but they're only used for the cruise control. And even though there are, see, appear to be like six buttons, two of them do nothing, they're not buttons. So you have only speed up, speed down, resume and, and reset. It doesn't even control all the cruise control functions because you enable the cruise control on the center console. So yeah, they could have done it a bit uh, better. But, you know, on the steering wheel, you also get the sport button, which lets you change between the modes. One click switches between normal and sport, and the long press activates track mode. This button is also a bit weird because on other cars, namely Italian cars, a red button at this position, the steering wheel, normally means it's the starter button. But in this case, it's just the button to change between different driving modes. Yeah. Otherwise, the interior, I think it's nice. It has some leather, it has some body-colored panels. Um, even the seats, they're this mix of quilted leather and Alcantara. Yeah, it looks nice. Of course, not everything that looks like metal is metal. Uh, the buttons, they look nice, but they're plastic, and underneath you also feel that's plastic. But as I mentioned already, it's plastic and it's light, and this is good. This is a car that's supposed to be fast and agile, and not a car that's supposed to be luxurious. Even though it manages to be very good on a, on a comfort level for a day-to-day -day use. This race center console means there is a storage area underneath for your wallet or your phone or whatever, but it's very flat, so you cannot put anything really tall in it. Um, and in general, this car does not have a lot of storage space. There are no door pockets, there is no glove box, um, there is one cup holder and it's back here and it's small and in this case it's also an ashtray so um, yeah no drinks for me. But this car has a combined trunk space of 200 liters which is not much but it's divided between two trunks. A trunk at the back and a trunk at the front so mm, yeah the front trunk it can only be opened from inside. We are a little lever here in the driver footwell, uh, making it not that nice to access when you're coming from outside the car. And once it's open, it's a very flat uh, surface, a very flat area, meaning that whatever you put in there on a hot day like today will get roasted. The trunk in the back, it's a bit less shallow, but it's right behind the engine and above the exhaust so whatever you put in there gets roasted as well so yeah on a day like today where it's hot outside and where I'm driving quite hot I have all my cargo in the interior all my bags are here in the passenger footwell because there's also no space behind the seats or so so yeah it's a bit of a pity because it makes the car more unpractical than it actually is because as I already mentioned this car is very nice to drive, it's civilized, it's comfortable. Um, you can drive this easily every day, but 
that lack of storage makes it kind of difficult, especially if two persons are to drive in this car, you basically can't take anything with you. I know these are small niggles for such a sports car that's not designed to be practical in the first place, but it, it misses just so much on being an almost perfect daily driver, so yeah. Second and third gear, they seem oddly long because it takes quite a while to, to rev them out. So that was never ending third gear. This is a very, very, very nice car. It's so precise, it gives you so much control. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to sometimes drive a car that is just light. It's light and nimble, because modern cars have become so heavy, and this car just, you know, it gives you this precision. You can still break in a corner, you can still, you know, you feel the chassis, what it's doing, it's, yeah. I think everybody should, should drive a sports car like this. There's a guy in a motorcycle behind me and, well, he tried to keep up, but this car is just too much of a little rocket. And roads like this, yeah, it's at home. The car is named Alpine, which means, you know, Alpine, like the Alps. Yes, mountain roads. That's where you have to drive this car. The original Alpine 110 from the early 60s was designed by designer Giovanni Michelotti. This new version apparently was designed by the same guy too because it looks as if the same car would have been put into production today. So they didn't take a lot of creative license when designing the car and I mean they went full on retro which I think is good but there are certain aspects of the car that I don't like that much. For example, I love the rear, I love the flared wheel arches, it looks absolutely gorgeous, but in comparison, the front is a bit mm, cutesy. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with cars being cute, but on such a serious sports car, I think the front could be a bit more, you know, authoritative, because the car really it deserves it but then again personal preference I know other people who love the car all around I personally I find the front is okay the rest of the car absolutely gorgeous so what remains to be said about the Alpine A110 well I think it's pretty obvious I think it's a great car more than that I think it's commendable that in this day and age Renault had the guts to bring out this pure sports car because let's face it, nowadays people buy SUVs. So bringing a new sports car to the market doesn't sound like the best business strategy. And if we are really honest about this, 
I don't think this car will ever earn Renault any money because production numbers are going to remain limited. It's a great car, but many people for the price will probably go with a brand like Porsche, even if it's not necessarily better to drive, meaning that this is mostly just a halo car for the company. It's a car that Renault wanted to make and they did. And I think it's cool. The Alpine A110 is a very interesting package. It's a pure sports car that still manages to be able to be driven daily without any issues with comfort. And at the same time, it's not crazy expensive to maintain and to own because it's only got a 1.8 liter engine. So taxes are not going to be that high and also uh, fuel efficiency is good and the running costs of the engine in general. So yeah, it's really good. But this is not a cheap car in absolute terms. The pure version I'm driving now starts at 62,000 Swiss francs. The Legendre version with the better seats starts at 67,000 Swiss francs. There is also an, an A110S that has 50 more horsepower and a bit of fiddle suspension. That's going to be even more expensive. So in absolute terms, this is a 60, 70 plus thousand franc car. Yeah, it's not cheap. But in relative terms, if you compare it to the next similar cars from other manufacturers like um, an Alfa Romeo 4C or a Porsche 718, this is actually quite a decent value. I mean, at least it's aligned with the competition. If you're in the market for a small two-seater sports car with excellent handling and great performance, you should have a look at the Alpine because as opposed to maybe a Porsche 718, I have the feeling that these cars will remain quite a rare sight on the roads. Not because they're worse or because they're inferior, but because they do not have the brand clout that a Porsche, for example, has. Then again, if you prefer that, the Alpine A110 is an absolute great car. It handles amazingly. It's light, it's nimble, it's just what you want from a sports car. It has enough power with its 252 horsepower and the seven speed gearbox is absolutely great. So, I mean, there's very, very little not to like about this car. And that's all I have to say. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and let me know what you think of the Alpine. Would you rather buy an Alpine than a Porsche 718? Let me know in the comments down below. So long, thanks for watching, and I'm gonna have some more fun with the Alpine now.